Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and we're back for another Sunday Sew Along. We are doing tutorials and today I am walking you through from start to finish how to make your own bias tape. You can buy bias tape in packages at the store, which I do occasionally, uh, but if you're wanting to make like fun prints and stuff, if you want a little pop of color, um, I use bias tape quite, fre quite frequently for my shirt tail hems, for neckline edges, armhole edges. Um, it's just great to have. And if you are making something and you've just got a weird scrap, it's perfect for um, using up those kind of weird scraps where you don't have enough to make a whole garment. Um, so I'm gonna be taking you through from cutting out of a piece of, uh, you know, weird piece of scrap to making it in, to sewing it into the tape, to then ironing it into um, bias binding basically, and then showing you how I like to sew and apply to a curved armhole. Now I can't show you the finished garment because the pattern, um, I can't show you the pattern yet, but <laughs> it just kind of worked, uh, made sense because I'm, I'm pattern testing right now anyway, but I will show you the armhole of the pattern and then um, the pattern itself will be out soon. So, you know, make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and um, that will, you'll get to see it when it comes, when it does come um, up, when that pattern is released, which it's a good one. So um, yes, that is today's video. Um, as always, if you enjoy this type of content and you would like to see more or help support the channel, I do have a coffee account, which is like a virtual tip jar. The link is down below in the description box. Um, all the proceeds that I make from there, you know, every little dollar helps, all goes right back into the channel. Um, equipment, um, you know, lighting, uh, supplies, supplies, maintenance on set equipment, it all goes right back into that, which mostly helps for my, um, you know, tutorial videos where I'm showing you up close stuff and that kind of thing and actual techniques. Okay, so that's what I've got. All right, without further ado, I'm going to send you over to the cutting table and we are going to make bias tape. Hope you enjoy. Leave any questions you have in the comments below and I'll answer those as soon as possible. See you guys next time. Bye. Okay, so we are going to be cutting scraps into bias strips, and then we are going to sew those bias strips into a long piece of bias, and then we are going to turn the bias into bias tape. Okay, so this is just some random, I just finished cutting out um, the top that we're going to be doing the armholes on, and this was like a random scrap that was left over. And it's not horrible, like, I, like a huge piece, like I'll put my hands on here so you can kind of see. But I have two pieces that are stacked on top of each other. I have the selvages lined up here at the bottom, and actually, if you have a gridded mat like this, this makes this even easier, but I'm going to show you how to do it if you don't. <laughs> Um, and then this is the torn edge here, which I also know is on grain. I will clean that up here in a minute, but basically we just want to make sure we have one known grain point, which would be the selvage edge in this case. All right. Now I've got these cool lines that show bias that if I have this lined up on the grid, I could line up a ruler from here to here, and that would give me my bias first bias cut, but I'll show you how to do it if you don't have something like that. Okay. You are going to need quilter's rule. So this is a um, two inch by 18 inch clear ruler. Because what you're going to want to do is um, the clear ruler has obviously the grid <laughs> and you're going to want to um, make a box. Basically one of these one inch, it works just fine. So you see the box, the one inch box that's here and you are going to want to um, bisect that. So basically I've got a corner. My box is right here. And I have a corner of the box, corner of the box, and I'm lining those up with my selvage. So this line here is now, is, is my bias line. Okay. So what we're going to do is once we've got that, you just need that first cut. Actually, I'm going to scoot this up so that I can go all the way to the edge. Okay. All right, so now I've got that lined up, so I'm just gonna take my rotary cutter, although you can use, well, a rotary cutter really is easiest, and I'm just gonna make that first cut. Okay, so now we know that this edge and this edge are on the bias, so now we can go off those. So I'm gonna put this bigger one off to the side for just a minute, and again, I have these laid on top of them, um, 
two layers, which just makes this the cutting go a little faster. All right, so now I've put this bias edge, I've lined it up, my cut edge, up to um, one of my grids, although you don't have to do that. Um, and now I'm going to cut, um, I'm trying to do this around the tripod, I want to cut my strips one and one eighth of an inch wide. Now, you're going to ask, why the one and one eighth? couple reasons. Number one, depending on how thick your fabric is, turn of cloth. So that's when you fold something over and you lose just a little bit of that width because it, you know, takes some length to go to do the turn. The second, someone's going to say, oh, you shouldn't cut towards your hand. You're right. I shouldn't. But I'm trying to do this around a tripod. I'm going slow. Um, the second reason is that bias is very unstable, which is what we want because um, that's going to help us sew around a curve. When you have this um, laid out, it, especially if you've got like a really flimsy uh, rayon or silk or something, really it's rayon that's the culprit, um, it can stretch just a little bit and when it stretches it gets just a little bit thinner. And when we're feeding this through our bias tape maker, you really, really want that um, the, to at least have that inch width. So I always cut mine one and an eighth, and I just find that those go through the bias tape makers so much easier. Okay, so from here, I am literally just going to cut one and one eighth, eighth inch wide strips. Now this is probably, this is kind of the smaller part. I mean, you can go super fiddly with this, but I just don't. This makes a surprising amount of bias tape. <laughs> okay, so I probably am just going to toss this little scrap. Um, if you're a quilter, you can put that in your quilting stash. And then I'll go to this larger one. I'll be able to get quite a few more out of this larger one. So now I will, um, this was my cut bias edge here. I had to think about that for a second. Right? Oh boy. Yeah, this is my cut. <laughs> okay. No, that's not it. It must be this. It's this. Okay. That's not it. That's it. Okay. Bias also has a little stretch to it. Okay. So now I'm just going to keep going and I'm going to cut my one and one, eight, one and one eighth inch wide strips, you know, all the way down until I get a weird scrap again. Um, and then I'm going to meet you at the sewing table and we're going to sew all of these strips together. Okay. We have our little pile of strips here. Okay. There's two different, um, kind of methods of, well, you could do the continuous, um, uh, what's it called? Continuous bias binding, which is where you have like a rectangle and all that stuff. And I know quilters use that way of making bias binding a lot. Um, I just find that hard to get even, <laughs> even strips. Um, I just probably don't do it enough. But anyway, so there's two different ways that your ends may look on when you're um, putting, seaming together your bias binding. So I'm going to show you how to do both of those. So if you've cut, um, if your scrap is more of like a square, if you have like one, you know, at least a 90 degree angle um, when you started to cut your bias binding, you're going to have ends that are cut on the bias. So they're going to be um, like diagonal. Okay. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to seam those together first. So you want to make sure that your strips are right sides together and you will never be sewing your strips together like this. Okay. They'll never be like on top of each other when you're seaming and I'm flipping this to be right sides together. When you're se seaming, it will always be a right angle. So just remember that that's going to save you a lot of issues. I like to seam mine together with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And so you want to offset your ends. So I wouldn't want to match this up, you know, to that cut edge. You're going to have like a little quarter inch um, triangle that's here at the top. And then we're going to sew from this cross point down here to this cross point, which should be like right at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So doing this around my phone, I have a new tripod. 
I'm not sure that I, I like this. Okay. Raw edges together. Oh, hold on. Got my machine set at a <laughs> long stitch length. Okay. So then when we put this open, you have like one continuous strip. Now we will go and press all of these seam allowances open when all is said and done. Okay, so that's one way to do it. And you'll just keep going down the line, down the line, down the line. Now, another way is if you have like, you know, if it's a weird scrap and you have like a weird end that's not cut on the bias like this, what you're gonna wanna do is, um, hit your tripod, is you want to cut a, and square it off at the end, okay? So now I have a squared end. So if that were like all crazy and weird, squared end. Now this is right side up. I've got another one here. So that is, that I've had to cut so that it's um, squared off. So I'm gonna put these right sides together. Like so. So we have like a little box that's here and I'm gonna sew from this corner down to this corner. Sorry, no, my hand is in the way there. Okay, like so. So we've sewn, you know, diagonally from one corner to the next. And then with these, we'll just trim off that excess to like a quarter of an inch and then that'll get pressed open. But now we also, it gets continuous, okay? So now I'm just gonna keep doing that until I have all of these strips connected into one. And once I do, I'm gonna um, meet you back at the ironing board and show you how we're gonna press this. Okay, so now we have our pile of bias strip. <laughs> so our next step is gonna be just to kind of finger press these little seams open and then come in with the iron and just iron those flat. Now the ones that we sewed that were squared off at the ends, those will already be flush when you go to press them up open. But these where we hit, where they were bias on the ends, when we press those open, you just wanna go back and just trim off those little ears. So now we're just gonna go the full length. Now, Obviously, this method gave me, you know, a lot of um, littler lengths of strips, which then makes this a little more work. Obviously, if you can get a longer piece, um, it's just less seaming that you have to do. Sorry, I didn't mean to hit the tripod there. But it is amazing how much you can get from just a little, a seemingly small piece of fabric. And this is great too with your small pieces of fabric, especially when you're working with, um, oh, cotton shirtings and rayons. Um, those make like some of the best, or silk, I guess, um, bias bindings. So if you've got a little bit extra, you know, just when you're cutting out a project, just cut out some strips and then you can sit down and do like um, a session where you're sewing like, you know, bias binding like all day or something. Turn on a movie, <laughs> make a whole bunch of bias binding. Um, and then I was actually uh, gifted a package of these. These are, um, they're for ribbon storage. They're just little cardboard um, spool winders kind of. It was a whole big package and I like to wrap all of my extra bias tape um, around there once I've made it all. And then you have, you know, fun stuff if you're wanting to do uh, different contrast colors. Sorry, I was walking away from the camera there. So. <laughs> okay, so just gonna keep on 
So this is just great to have that in your stash so that when you are working on, I don't know, like a chambray button down shirt or something and you would like a fun pop of color at the hem because you guys know I love to do my shirt tail hems with bias binding. It's just much easier that way. And actually, I think I'm going to show you how I do the armhole and the hem because this does have a, this is not a, I'm not making a button down shirt. Um, it's actually a surprise pattern. <laughs> You'll see it soon, but it does have a curved hem line. So it's the same as if you were doing a button down shirt, but a little different because both side seams, you don't have a, a front opening. So I think I'm going to show you how I apply it to both a curved hemline as well as the armhole. I'm not doing neckline on this one because this is a little, has a special technique, this particular pattern. Okay, so now we've got everything all nice and pressed open. We are going to do our bias binding. So I have this little kit that I got off Amazon. I will link it down below. It's just a bias tape maker kit. I, this is the one I use 90% of the time. So, um, and we've cut bias strips in order to fit this size. So this is gonna make half inch wide bias tape. So you start off with an inch, obviously mine's inch and an eighth, and then um, it makes half inch wide bias tape. Okay, so the way that these work, um, you've got this little guy that's facing up, and um, you wanna start with an end that has at least a diagonal cut. It doesn't have to be perfectly on the bias, but just one, it makes it feeding through easier. And you've got this little um, slit here at the top, so I'm just gonna feed this through. And then when it pulls through, it folds over on itself. So we want this wrong side up. So our right side is facing down. Let me put this little all back. That. Okay, so once you've got this started, and it can be kind of funky at the beginning, you can cut that off later. So now what I'm going to do is just slowly pull this back, and I'm just following right at that tip there with my iron. So it's folding the two raw edges in towards the center is what it is doing. And I'm going to go way over here. And then we just keep going. Now, when you get to the joins, those can be just a wee bit tricky. So just go slow. But there's that join there. There and there, the way that wraps. So now I'm just gonna do this to this whole length of bias tape. And um, then I'll meet you right back here and we'll take a look at it and talk about it a little bit more. Okay, so now we have a bias tape. Now this is called single, this can be kind of confusing. This is called single fold bias tape when it folds in on both sides to the center, which is confusing because there's technically two folds, but that's called single fold. And if you see something calling for double fold bias tape, that's when it's been folded in like this and then folded in half on top of itself and then pressed again. That is called double fold bias tape. So we've made half inch wide single fold bias tape. And um, that small little scrap, now it was two small scraps, obviously, because remember I had them stacked on top of each other, but made about seven yards of bias tape, of a half inch wide bias tape. So that is pretty amazing. And it's beautiful, isn't it? Okay, so now what we're gonna do is actually sew this um, to the armhole. And um, also I'll show you how I do the hem as well. So I'll meet you back at the sewing machine. Okay. So um, I'm not gonna be able to show you the hem of this um, top just because it's done very oddly, but this is done, it's done the same way as the armhole. So I'll talk you through it a little bit. Okay, so I've got my armhole here. Um, we've got side seam, here's my shoulder seam, and it comes around to the side seam again, okay? Now, um, if this were a hem, I would have, this would be like the other side seam. Does that make sense? So you'd have one side seam sewn and, and done, and then the other side seam would be open. Um, obviously if this was a button up shirt, you would just be, you know, going button placket all the way around to the other button placket. So both your side seams would be done. So hopefully that makes sense. And then we've got our bias tape. So this is done the same way. Um, and it's just very quick and easy, surprisingly. Okay. So I have the shirt, 
um, right side up. And I'm just going to start, got to find the end of my tape. There we go. <laughs> I'm just going to start um, right side up at one side. It doesn't matter. And then I have my tape, which is, um, we're doing it right sides together. So I'm just going to unfold one of the sides with my fingers here. Hopefully this isn't too dark. Also have a new tripod pod situation. We're trying some new things here on the channel, folks. Trying to get adventurous with camera angles. Okay, I always like to start with a little bit on past that um, armhole or that side seam or whatever, you know, that open edge. Because we can always clip that off. All right, and now I'm basically sewing this at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And as we go around our curve, um, I'm unfolding this edge of the tape. The other tape is still folded in. And I'm just sewing, uh, matching my raw edges, and I'm just sewing right in that crease that was made when I ironed my bias tape. So I'm just going little by little. This is also the similar way that you would finish off a neck edge. Again, I'm working with a pattern here that had an interesting, a different neck edge finish, so. And then when I'm coming to places where I have like the, um, the seam, I'm just making sure to kind of with my fingers, make sure that that's flat. Just helps reduce some bulk. Okay, so there we go. Now we can just cut off the excess here. Now, if you have a really deep curve, you can go in and clip your seam allowance. And I may, just because the underarm usually gets, it's a pretty deep curve, just give a few little clips there in that, in that deep part of the underarm curve. I don't do this for hems. Usually there's not that deep of a curve. Um, just going to do that in a couple spots. Okay, like so. All right, next step is now, um, so we've got it all sewn down here, and now I'm just gonna basically fold it right on that edge where we sewed, and we're gonna understitch it. I love understitching, it's magical. <laughs> So I'm just folding this over and I'm going to sew um, right next to the seam line on to the bias tape. Again, we just want to go slow um, and you want to make sure that your seam allowance and all the bias tape and stuff is all going to the right hand side. Also, I would like to point out, we have not pressed anything. For some reason, this edge got like pressed or something funny right there. Okay. All right. So now we can go and cut that bias tape flush with our side seams. Okay. And now we're going to do up our side seam. So I'm just going to take my shirt. I have a clip-on gooseneck tripod here. Let me know how you guys feel about this um, vantage point. All right, so now I'm just gonna be doing things right sides together. So obviously here's our wrong side. Um, you can see there's that little fold that's right there. So we're gonna match that up and we're actually gonna want to unfold your bias tape so that it's completely 
flat right there, okay? Like so. I'm gonna put a pin in that. Okay, and then the rest of your side seam. I have some weird stuff going on down here, which will make better sense when this pattern is released, but right now. <laughs> I do have some notches. Okay. So again, I'm gonna start at the hem just because it helps to, you know, make sure that this isn't folding back on itself. So I'm just going to sew my side seam. I have a half inch seam allowance I'm working with on this pattern. And I'm working with a rayon, so I also just want to make sure that everything is lying as it should. Okay. Okay, so now we've sewn. Hopefully that's not too shadowy. Um, all the way up through there. And actually, I'm going to finish that off real quick. Yeah, <laughs> let me hit this with the serger real quick. And then um, I'll meet you right back here and we'll finish off this armhole. All right, so I finished that off and I've gone all the way up. And again, my bias tape is flat up through that area. All right, so now I'm gonna turn this shirt right side out, just makes it easier. I still haven't pressed anything. We'll do that in a minute. And, um, okay, this is gonna, my I am gonna end up pressing my seam allowance to the back, which is this way to the right this time. And then I'm just gonna finger press that back into place. So that's that fold for that bias tape. And now we're going to press the whole tape in. So does that make sense? It's folded on itself and we're pressing the whole thing in. So there are um, understitching is visible on the wrong side. But I got I sew in a circle here. So I've got everything right side out. But I'm sewing inside the armhole. Okay, and I always start at the underarm because usually I've had to like kind of finger press a few things into place. So I'm just going to now get that started. And now it should just lie pretty flat. Um, as we go around here in the deep curve, you just want to do a little by little, but I'm now sewing really close to the fold. And just kind of making sure that nothing is getting pulled up under itself. But I like to sew with the um, bias tape up because number one, you can see where you're sewing but also um, it helps ease in any weirdness that might be happening on the outside of the shirt. Also, once we're finished here, we can go through and um, give this a really good press. Hit it with a lot of steam. And that will get things lying really nice and flat. So now, see it's all kind of ripply. I'm gonna go press it really, really well, and then I'll meet you back here and we'll look at our finished armhole. Okay, so there you have it. There, our armhole is finished nicely with the top stitching. We have the bias tape that's on the inside there. 
really beautifully. Sorry, that's kind of dark. I need to play around with my lights more, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, that'll work for the hems, necklines. Um, and yes, that is what I use bias tape for um, about 90% of the time. So um, yeah, hopefully that was helpful and gives you some ideas for how to use your scraps of fabric going forward to have some um, just bias tape on hand, which you could do because um, this would be really cool if I did a contrast fabric on the inside. That could have been a lot of fun as well. So um, yeah, just giving you some ideas. All right, let me know down below if you have any questions and I will answer those as soon as possible. Have a good Sunday, guys, and I'll see you again on Tuesday. Bye.